guys. Welcome back to the Omaha Places podcast. We're your hosts. My name is Connor and I'm the founder of Omaha Places and 402 Social. And my name is Delaney. I'm the digital content coordinator for Omaha Places. All right. I feel like it's been a fun week. Do you want to start with where you've been this week? Sure. I actually just went to the Barnado Halloween speakeasy pop-up. So they always change their themes. Mm -hmm. Like they do a bunch of different ones, but the Halloween one, I feel like always stands out the most to me. Maybe it's just because I love Halloween. I don't know, (laughs) but it was so cool in there. And the drinks they have this year are based around the seven deadly sins. They have an alien one that lights up. Like it's a little alien glass and then it's green. Uh And then they have this rose. I only tried like three of the drinks, but they have this rose and they have like leafy stuff around the vine or I don't know, um, stem. (laughs) There we go. Um, And they torch it. And so it like sparkles all the way up and then goes out around the rose. Cool. And then the third one I tried, it was like a, pumpkin spice espresso martini in a cauldron and they put dry ice so it's like overflowing with fog out of the cauldron cool yeah so it was super cool they open today so it'll be open for a week by this point yeah but they're open wednesday through saturday at 6 p.m um they're located at village point so definitely a spot to check out for halloween to get all your spooky stuff done yeah because this month flies Yeah, it does. There's going to be some good Halloween pop-ups and hopefully we'll get like a a list of all of the Halloween pop bar pop-ups around Omaha. We've, we've started drafting that already. So maybe by the, well, probably not by the time this episode comes out, but we should get that up soon though. Yeah. Because we're we're running out of time. Yeah. Yeah. Where have you been? Um, okay. So I went to ghost donkey, which (gasps) we, I can't, have we talked about ghost donkey at all i think we did talk about it last week because i said i was going so we both went so that's good um yeah i went and sat like on the patio i walked through like champagne lanes and obviously ghost donkey because you have to to get to the patio um but to to recap so ghost donkey and champagne lanes are the two new concepts from flagship restaurant group that just opened downtown in the Brickline building. Mm-hmm. So it's like right behind Memoir, if you guys know where that is, like right by the riverfront. And Ghost Donkey is a mezcal bar, right? Yes. And it's kind of, kind of feels like a bit of a Latin theme. Mm-hmm. And then Ghost, or, and then Champagne Lanes is connected to it. And that is kind of like, like it's, disco vibes. Yeah, and it's kind of like a mini bowling ball on a normal bowling lane. Yeah. Is how it was yeah, described. Yeah. To me. So there's like bowling lanes in there and yeah, they have a bar, they have food. So, and you can, um, so obviously like there's only mezcal stuff on the ghost donkey side, but that's not like, I usually like sweeter, like fruity drinks. So I went and got a drink and sushi from champagne lanes, but then they brought it out to ghost donkey. Oh, so nice. you have to like, like you can't order from the ghost donkey, like servers or bartenders. You have to like go over to the other concept and vice versa. Um, but you can like bring stuff between the two. So it's nice if you like have a group of people too, cause then, you know, depending on everybody's preferences, they can kind of go to whichever drink place they want and then just like bring it out. The patio is really nice. It's pretty big. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the couches are mo- comfy. They're really comfy. It's mostly covered. It is dog friendly when my friends brought her oh, dog. Nice. Um, so yeah, it was a, a good vibe all around. We went like, probably like 3 p.m. on Friday. So we were like the only people there too, at least like out on the patio. That's like nice, it yeah. wasn't busy at all, which was nice. But some of the like videos and stuff that I've seen at night, it's been packed. Oh, I'm sure it's a like pop in place. Yeah. And it'd be great for a birthday party. Like yes. if you're going out with a big group of people, that'd yeah. be the perfect stop. Yeah. There was actually um, a bachelorette party coming in as we were leaving and like Champagne Lanes, especially like that's a great spot mm-hmm. for a bachelorette stop. It just like has those vibes and the good music. Yeah, yeah. Did have you been this week too, or did you go yet? I went last week. Okay. Um, but it was it was pretty like popping when I got there, and then by like nine, I'm pretty sure it was quiet out really? on the patio. Okay. It was oh, on, on a Thursday. Patio. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but good good spots. 
for um, sure. Where else have you been? Um, I went to the Grand Feline Hotel, which is located near 160th and West Center. Cute. Um, you'll love this for your little kitty cat. Yeah. But they have, basically what it is, is they have a bunch of different suites and they're like actual bedrooms. Like it reminds me of a five-year-old's, <laughs> maybe two-year-old bedroom Yeah. for a cat though. Like actually has a little bed. They have TV stuff. stands, TVs. They what? have cameras so you can watch your cat the whole time. They offer grooming services and there are different sizes of suites. Yeah. They have cat towers in there. Tons TVs. of toys. Yeah. They just like put on cat TV, mm -hmm. like little fish or something. Yep cute <laughs> <laughs> no spoil your cat at this place because yeah and the grooming services i was watching some of the cats and they put them in this little it looks like a microwave but it's the dryer yeah and they are never happy to be there <laughs> <laughs> i think i've seen those cat dryers on tiktok I, some lady put like six kittens in there together and they're like all smushed and like walking all over yeah each they other just look the grumpy dryer. and then i was trying to get the cat to paw at the the thing because yeah. every time i took the camera away he would start pawing at it again. he's like let me out oh. <laughs> but it was super cute so definitely it a great spot in case you're going out of town and need to leave your cat in some great care yeah literally me next week i need to figure out what to do with jelly yeah which place are you gonna take her i don't know i think she would enjoy the like community roam around aspect of the catios better than being in like her own room because she's super social so yeah like some cats prefer to just kind of like have their own space right so like having their own little bedroom is is better but um yeah like the fact that the catios has a little like outdoor sunbathing area too like i think she would prefer that i actually got to go in one of the suites with the sweetest cat oh like she was just rubbing up on me and being so sweet. I was like, oh, dang, maybe I'm a cat person. Melrose, <laughs> do you want a sister? Melrose, do you want a friend? <laughs> she would love a friend. She just would probably irritate the cat. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so I went a couple of other places. One was The Hub, which is a brand new spot over in Council Bluffs. And I think it's technically called The Hub Patio. And I realized that they have like an existing location right next door that's also called the hub but it's like the hub trampoline park or okay. something and then they opened the patio right next door to that and so it literally does have like a pretty nice patio pretty big they have like some covered areas they have a pickleball court and like another little game area out on the patio and then inside they have the mini bowling lanes from bob and willie wonderful or, yeah from wonder bowl um, and then they just have like food and drinks and stuff. So it's one of those places where adults can come like get a cocktail, hang out, like they have, you know, adult activities, but then kids are welcome and the ki there's like activities for kids too. And they can just kind of like run around and play with other kids and then the adults can socialize. Um, it was a, it was a good spot. I went to their grand opening. So they were still kind of like, like, I think it was Working a lot of family and friends yeah. and stuff too. Um, and of course they had like some extra stuff going on for the grand opening, but it was a cool spot. Fun. And especially like, like we don't cover a ton of stuff in Council Bluffs, but I think that something like that in Council Bluffs was needed. Cause I don't really know of another place like that off the Not top of really. my head, at least over like, in that area. Activities to do over there are a little bit limited. Like yeah. I know they have Joe's carting. That's like a big hit, but mm. other than that, like, yeah. So if you guys are in the Council Bluffs area or ever find yourself in Council Bluffs, the hub patio just open good spot to check out i went to your favorite place cleo last night and then i went to lock alono for the first time oh fun i've been wanting to go i'm a rum girl yeah and so yeah it was just like it exceeded all of my expectations it's just such a cute little vibey spot be perfect for a first date is what i was thinking yeah that actually would be those are that's like a great great two spots to pair together because they're also right next to each other yeah you walk out of cleo and go down the stairs yeah there and that's it i, didn't, I never even thought about doing those together but yeah i was stuff. sitting there and i was like i've never been to la colona do you want to get a drink afterward <laughs> and she was like yeah <laughs> did you get one of the like big like fancy i did get a have. fancy one but i wanted the one that they set on fire oh but i didn't 
know which one that was. And then, <laughs> yeah, when I went up to order my drink, someone else got that one. I'm oh. like, so it's okay. I'll have to go back. <laughs> yeah, next time. Yeah, but it was a it was a great night. Nice. So definitely recommend, nice. especially for a first date. Yeah, that'd be really good. Um, okay, last place I went was, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Ellie's Chinchoro. Do you know how to pronounce no, that? No, okay. that feels right. Um, it is off Cumming Street and it's Puerto Rican food. So they used to be located, I think down in South Omaha. And then they had like a, a pretty small location and then they just, they closed for like six months or something while they were moving to this new location kind of by Millwork Commons. And like, you can see it right off Cumming Street. They have a really big patio um, and then a really nice like inside too. And it's like all windows on the side. So you can like, it's like great natural lighting and everything. Um, but yeah, the food was really good. It, it's one of those places that you, we like looked at the menu. I went, with my, I went with my mom. We looked at the menu and we were like, we have absolutely no idea what like any of this <laughs> stuff is. <laughs> so you have to be maybe a little more adventurous to go there, but like plantains, I knew what those were. And then a lot of the food is like plantains in different forms and then whatever oh, protein you want with it so my mom got I don't remember exactly what the name of it on the menu was but it was basically like mashed plantains and then I think she had shrimp on top of hers but you could get like beef or chicken or like a, a, what a, a whatever other option you wanted mine was like plantains in like little cups like they were harder and then oh. they were like formed into a cup and then um, had shrimp inside the cup. And then I had a sauce that I could like put on top of it. So it was Sounds like a good. little awkward, like eat the cup, but it was really good. Yeah. And just something really different. Like I, I've never been to Puerto Rico. I never really knew what Puerto Rican food was. So it was a, a good, good spot. I, I hope that they do well there because there's not many restaurants in that area. Like there is, um, uh, what's the other like Mexican type place with the patio hook and lime. <laughs> yep. That is not too far away. And then obviously there's like some stuff in Millwork. I want to know what's going into the session room. Oh yeah. Cause yeah, that's it was that confirmed gone. Yeah. Without any, <laughs> without any news of that, yeah. like not even in the Grow Omaha did it say it was closing. It's really? just weird. That is weird. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's, that's an interesting area of town mm -hmm. because you can definitely tell it's like, like s slowly things are opening there and there are some like really good spots, but it's still very much like always under construction and like still very much feels like it's being developed right and but then obviously like during college world series like it really that, pops off yeah it's like super packed down there so yeah i hope that all the businesses that are going in there like are good yeah. like stay for a while i think it is hard to survive the off season from the college world series because yeah. if you're not like on social media enough mm -hmm. or marketing your events enough it's really easy to forget because we're yeah. not down in that area very often yeah it's like you go downtown you're probably going to go to like the old market right. area you don't really think about that other area even like capital district is a little too far i mean you could walk from like capital district down there but you're not just going to like casually it's kind of like if you're going to that area you have you, to make it the destination yeah yeah so um, but yeah, I really liked um, Ellie's Chinchoro, so I would definitely recommend it. I think our commenters have recommended it a few times to be included in oh, our really? things. Okay, so cool. People know about it. Love that. We're going to jump into follower questions now. So the first question that I pulled was, what is your favorite local hotspot right now? And this is a fun one. At first <laughs> I was thinking like new places, but then I was like, wait, it, this, it didn't specify new. So I don't think this is going to come as a any surprise, surprise but <laughs> it's going to be Sunny's. But I feel like it, with good reason. Okay. Um, first of all, Sunny's has like definitely become my third place and Run Club has a, a like a lot to do with that. But even before Run Club was started, because I lived in Exarbon for like a year and a half or something like before Run Club ever came around and I was still always at Sunny's. Um, it's like, you can hang there during the day or at night, even when they're not open, like 
you can still go in and just like sit down and hang out. They have Wi-Fi, so I used to bring my laptop down there all the time and work. Um, obviously, like when they are open, you can grab a drink, you know, again, during the daytime or at night. Um, you can order food from the inner rail and they actually have QR codes on the tables at Sunny's. So you can just order online from a vendor at the inner rail and they'll deliver it. I over. love that. Yeah. It's such a good feature. And mm -hmm. like, you can also, um, they don't have the QR codes for other Exarban restaurants, but you can go get like saffron or rub or something like bring it into Sunny's. Um, or you can just like bring your own food probably. I, yeah, I don't know if that's sure. actually allowed, I but feel like you I don't, can. yeah, just don't be like obnoxious about it, but <laughs> yeah, you can like bring your own snacks and stuff. Um, they like last Saturday, I watched the Husker game down there. They just like put up a big screen and like, I didn't even get any drinks or anything. I just like met up with a bunch of people, sat under the pergola, listened to the game. Um, so it's just like a very versatile place, whether you're like want to go down and get some drinks, whether you want to attend like run club or one of their other wellness events. Cause they like have put some, uh, some other stuff on too. If you want to do salsa at Sunny's or like a karaoke night, I think they've started doing that. They every do Thursday. all sorts of live music things yeah. all week long, really. Yep. So it's just, it's a good place no matter like what you're looking for. It's also kid friendly. They have like the bag toss games and like the big green area where kids can run around. Even yesterday when I was there for run club, there was tons of babies there. Oh, I wow. don't know if it was baby night or something, but <laughs> there's like, I don't know, just babies everywhere. So yeah, it's just a very versatile place. And I would say they, they do a good job of like upgrading it every year too so because it's seasonal they kind of have the winter to think about like okay how are we going to make this better mm -hmm. for next year like what improvements improvements can we make and they've started saying like okay like the first year was season one season two season three I love that. which is cool because then you one not only remember like okay this has been open for however many years but it like really defines like the the eras I guess of sunny so that will probably be really hard to top as my like local hotspot. You know, we really do need to partner with them as much as we talk about them. I've, I've talked to them about doing different things. There was one event um, that I really wanted to do, which we probably could still have time to do. I think I might've told you about this. I'm just gonna say it. We wanted to do um, like a singles night, but you make a presentation about your single friend and then go up and like present about your friend. And then obviously there would be like a happy hour or something like at the end. But I think that'd be so fun. There's, I've seen videos of people doing that on TikTok and your friends have to, to be like, it. like really outgoing. I feel like I know. to give a presentation about you, but yeah. And then you either meet up with them afterward or mm -hmm. the friends of friends like direct you to yeah their number or something. Yeah. I think that'd be fun. That would be fun. And obviously like the, you could be like present on your friend and like be in a relationship and you would just have to like disclose like I'm not single but like what like there's so many single friends that I have that I'm like you are so cool like I want to tell everybody how cool you are and like that'd be so fun to just like literally tell a room full of people how cool you are and it takes away the pressure of like having to explain to someone about yes. you yeah I guess yeah totally so and so my point was that I had talked about doing that at Sunny's and and we just kind of like forgot about it, but maybe I should bring that back up. Yeah, and maybe you just have people wear like different color shirts that tell you already what they are. Oh, so the people giving the presentation, either they are single and yeah. they're wearing that shirt, yeah. so you know, because maybe you like them yeah. <laughs> more than their friend. Yeah, because you literally. get to see their personality. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that'd yeah, be it's a like good wear, idea. Wear a white shirt if you're single. Wear a black shirt if you're not single. Right. But you're just here being supportive. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. All right. What's a question you pulled? Oh, let's see. What should I do with my girlfriend for our anniversary? Ooh. Okay. I picked two options and they're a little pricey, but then I picked like a option that would be more affordable, but Boho Supper Club popped into my head first. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, my brother's girlfriend, she wanted to go to Boho Supper Club for their anniversary, but never did. Cause my brother didn't like the menu. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it can be a little late, you yeah. know, just tell me when to go pick a menu that you like and then force him. Yeah. 
I was like, he he can deal with it. And then go get drinks in the Bohemian Gardens afterward and just like chat and reminisce yeah. on how far you've come. Yeah. <laughs> um, another idea, eat at Memoir and go roller skating. Oh, that'd be cute. That would be. And it's a good way to, you know, like move around after you eat yeah. all that delicious food at Memoir. Yeah. Or even if you're not into roller skating, like some people just take a walk like skating. Yeah, go walk around the riverfront go people watch and sit by that um, gondola ride that I love. That doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cheaper option, um, go grab pizza. Dolomites is downtown. Lyle's is in Exarban. And then Izzy's is also downtown. And then picnic in the park or go to Falconwood Park and watch a movie yeah. with your pizza. Yeah. That'd be so cute. I was like, what would I want? <laughs> <laughs> that so. is a good like barometer. Like what would we want to do for an mm -hmm. anniversary? And I, you know, don't, I've not had an anniversary in like forever. So yeah, go enjoy your anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Happy anniversary to yeah. whoever sent this question. In. <laughs> um, okay. Somebody said best places after a concert at the CHI going to the Lainey Wilson concert next month. And so I did. So the first half of my answers, I was just like, randomly putting things down. And then I was like, wait, I should actually look up what day of the week this concert is on. And it's on a Friday. So there are going to be a lot more options for this concert just because it's on a weekend. So a lot of kitchens are open later on like Friday and Saturday. Um, so it kind of depends like what exactly you want to do after the concert. But if you're looking for more of a sweet treat, Insomnia Cookies mm -hmm. in the Capital District, open late. Cattle Call has food until 12 a.m. Tuesdays through Saturdays. Cattle Call is... Right next to the green room, across yeah, from Cumbia. By the Orpheum Theater. Yep. I don't know the exact it's, street. It's that right off the riverfront, though. Yeah. Or not I the riverfront, the Jean Leahy Mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also the green room for drinks closes at 2 a.m. every day. Mercury closes at midnight every day, but the kitchen closes at either 10 or 11, depending on the day. But a Friday night, it would close at 11. I'm not sure if they're still doing food anymore. Mercury? I heard a rumor that they were done with food, but I could Whoa. be wrong. I heard that from like service industry people. Really? Yeah. So I'll, I'll fact check that, but. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't include them in the late night food roundup that we did because of that. Okay. I, so on their Google listing, it still says right. like kitchen. I'm going to have to time. make yeah. a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you please give I've, me I do make phone calls for those listicles do occasionally. <laughs> occasionally I do that. Um, like the Kaneko one, they wouldn't answer the mm. phone. Oh, I called it several different times <laughs> to try and get people to, you know, get yeah. their information. So dang. Yeah. I go above and beyond over here. We love that. We love that. <laughs> okay. Well, interesting. So TBD on Mercury, you know, honestly, I don't know if that would surprise me that much because they are very much known for their drinks more mm -hmm. than their food. I don't even know what, and kind the of changing themes have. that they have. Yeah. So, okay, interesting. Um, also, Ghost Donkey closes at 2 a.m. on Fridays and midnight during the week. I'm assuming the same goes for Champagne Lanes. I would assume probably so. probably have the yeah. same hours. Um, off the top of your head, are there any that I might be missing? Other spots? I mean, okay, again, if it's on a Friday, like every bar downtown is going to be probably... And especially in the Capital AM. District, like yeah. that's right there. Yeah. We are doing... We've done all of the, almost yeah. all the promotions by now for yep. the Capital District. So check out one of our girls' night out videos or our yep. date night videos. Yeah. Um, and they'll have all the Capital District places included. Yeah. yeah. So it just might depend on if you're just looking for drinks or if you want food too. I heard through the grapevine that there's an arcade bar in the Capital District. Really? And I'm like, why did that not come up? Somebody said that Capital Arcade or something. I've Beer Cade, Arcade. Yeah. So I'm going to do some digging. Okay. Because I was like, <laughs> we just did. Yeah, I've never the seen The Capital that. District Post. Is it like, were they saying it was already open or it's coming yeah, soon? Yeah, they were, they've been going there. What? I was like, I didn't know there was an arcade downtown other than Little Bow. Yeah. So I'm going to find out for okay. everyone. All right. What other questions did you have? Um, where would you go to read a book and have a cocktail alone? Okay, I got you. This is so <laughs> me. Like, <laughs> I didn't submit this question, but this okay. is, yeah. 
Yeah, like I said last week, Silent Book Club at Edge of the Universe is on Mondays and it's really hit or miss. But Silent Book Club is the best like thing for that. You don't have to talk to people if you don't want to. Um, and they're always at places that I feel like have cocktails. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Edge of the Universe in general, for the most part, unless they're doing like one of their big events, would be a good spot. And it's fun to be in there. Um, the Mill as well. Um, Berchen Beer Garden. Like it's so pretty back there. I would definitely check that out. Um, B5 Brewing. It's also pretty quiet in there during like the weekdays. Mm -hmm. So nice spot. Sunny's in inner rail, of course. Yep. And then Oliver's Patio is sticking out to me. Yeah. That'd be a good one. Do you have other ideas? Yeah, I added a couple of my own to this list. So Idle Wine is, I mean, this is wine. They don't have cocktails, um, but they're in Little Bohemia. Even if you didn't like wine, you could go get a beer from Lumen, Lumen and bring it over to Idle. It's a very <laughs> small space in Idle. So if it is like a weekend and they're busy, it might I would be maybe a little, choose a different spot. Yeah, yeah, it might be weird to take up a table. Um, but yeah, very small, cozy place. Can cater, um, the Millwork Commons location. Wait, is that can cater? Yes. Yes. Is it? No. What Draft. It? No. Oh, oh cross strain. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. I totally just, I mean, I guess you probably, you probably could. All breweries are too. good to do this, these at yeah. because they're so big typically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, either you could do the Kincater and Exarbin or Cross Strain and Miller Commons would be another good one. Script Town would be a good one. Um, also Site One, I feel like would be a good one. They have mm. food too, which we always love. When but they do have some crazy trivia nights. They so do. I would maybe avoid those if you don't like a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah. You just have to like look up some of these places and like see if it's yeah. just, you know, a normal night or if there's like an event going on. Also Tiny House. I did think a of them. Really good one. But they do, it's a small space again. So yeah. it does fill up kind of quickly. It's small, but they also have some like, like those tables that are in the back. Like you could literally just have your own little corner to yeah. hide in, which I feel like if somebody is trying to like go out alone to read a book, you probably want that like secluded vibe. Mm -hmm. um, but I can personally vouch for Tiny House, um, The Mill, and Sunny's to have to like I have gone to those places alone well I guess technically tiny house I was with silent book club but I've gone to all those places just this to is, get a cocktail and read a book this is becoming so much of a trend I've mm -hmm. seen even at blue sky I see people come in and read their books really? there I'm like this is a kind of a loud place but well there's like if it a doesn't lot bother of you bars in New York City that are literally book bars that you can go in and either just like get a coffee if it's the morning or like a cocktail later in the day and the whole point is just like sit there and read a book that's so nice and obviously it's like like you can spark up a conversation with somebody and like still meet people out there but yeah if you just like are kind of more of an introvert you genuinely just want to read your book but don't want to be like sitting home alone by yourself yeah you like to be surrounded by people but not yeah. interacting with them exactly yeah. So and I feel like everybody could could benefit from a night like that every once in a while. Honestly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, should we move into events? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this is going to be ev <laughs> events happening the weekend of October 10th through 13th. I'm laughing because apparently last week when it was September, I said August. And the only person that caught it was my mom. Nobody else <laughs> God, that thank is. goodness for her I know, for both of our moms for keeping us in check <laughs> okay so the weekend of october 10th through 13th if you guys want even more events we send out a newsletter and post a video on our instagram and tiktok and facebook and youtube every thursday morning um, but these podcast episodes come out on wednesday so this is your chance to get events a whole day early so the Mulhall's Christmas opening is happening Thursday, October 10th from 5 to 8 p.m. They're going to have live music, food, free wine, which is fun. And then a first look at Christmas at Mulhall's. So if you guys don't know what Mulhall's is, it's like the biggest local plant store in town by far. And it's so fun just to like look at all the different plants that they have. Mm -hmm. They have like a little gift store market area where they sell a ton of stuff and then they always deck it out for Christmas and they have like 
like in their little gift store, they'll have tons of Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. So it's just a fun place to like go walk through and look at everything. Yeah. Even if you're not into plants, it's so nice and they're dog friendly. Oh, fun. That's a good, good shout. Cool. But, so I might be taking Melrose for Christmas pictures. Oh, fun. <laughs> I'm yeah. We're doing our own Christmas card. I decided this year. <laughs> Um, I included the Halloween pop-up bar at the Cottonwood. Um, that's hop- happening October 10th from 6 to 11 p.m. Thursday through Sunday. They're kind of like, you know, our Barnado pop-up. They're just going all out with decorations, all these fun drinks. Definitely a spot to check out. And I'm going next Wednesday, so I'll be able to tell you more about it <laughs> after I go. I'm excited. Fun. Um, okay, free workday at Luli Creative House is happening i didn't even write the date down oops i think it's on that friday so the 11th from 10 a.m to 3 p.m <laughs> sorry guys um luli is located at 19th and howard fun fact it's in the same building as our co-working spot so maybe some of our team will end up going there i've done this um free co-working at luli before and it's really nice luli is like an event space and photo studio so it it's just like so cute and colorful inside and there'll be a lot of other like creatives or like entrepreneurs and stuff who are working remote there that's cool during free co-working i'm day. excited to check it out i think i'm going maybe i'll catch you guys in the elevator <laughs> <laughs> um village point is doing their boo bash on october 12th from 1 to 5 p.m so trick-or-treating takes place from 1 to 3 for the little kiddos they'll have face painting balloon animal twister people um <laughs> you know like twister people you know like that's how they oh, make it they, they, twist, they said okay, balloon I twisters but i was like that could be misleading okay <laughs> balloon twisters what's that but the balloon animal twister people okay, i get it that's now. what i'm going with <laughs> gift card giveaways um and they're doing a flash mob but is it really a flash mob if, if they promote the flat no, when it's, it's happening not. it's just the it's mob. then a mob. <laughs> <laughs> so mob. anyways, that's happening at three. The flash mob, not flash <laughs> mob. Um, and then they're having a free concert from three to 5 p.m. So definitely going to be a fun spot to check out. Nice. I believe that's on Sunday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, Sunday. Cool. All, all the Halloween events now that we're in October, which is so fun. And a little Christmas. Yeah, I had a little Christmas <laughs> from <Mulholz. laughs> All right, love it. Well, anything else to add for this week? I think that's it. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Omaha Places podcast. We'll see you guys next week. See you. Bye.